Greetings everyone and welcome back to some more sorcery. Today we're gonna explore this place. This bronze sphere thingy which I think is important. <laughs> the bronze dome is not a tent as you had assumed but rather almost a perfect hemisphere. Its surfer gleams with a shifting, glossy luster of liquid metal. You circle around the dome, taking in the shining hue and the near-perfect curve. You have never met a Christian who could craft anything like this. Its edges disappear into the ground. It could in fact be a buried sphere, but you cannot tell. There is no discernible door or opening. You place your hand on the dome, it is cool, metallic, and you detect the fine vibration beneath your palm. Strike the dome? I feel we need to find some spell for it. Find safe passage maybe, but I'm running low on my freaking stamina now, so... Cast slowness probably no. Open locks and doors. I, I'm not sure is there any opening or door. How? Oh, let's try it. I am quite worried about my stamina, but... You cast the spell, a calm voice speaks into your thoughts. Your sword is the key here, the voice says. Is this dome... In previous spell? Following the advice from your spell, you strike your sword against the surface. It clings as it bounces off the bronze surface. There is no way to cut through this slick surface. Hmm. So, what am I supposed to do now? I mean, I checked all the spells, there wasn't really anything. Anything particularly like useful which I could find. Oh man, maybe sharpened blade would help, but we don't have a beeswax, so see the future. I I checked everything. I'm not sure is there anything else I could use, so might as well try this. You sit cross-legged on the ground and put your palms on the orb. Looking to the stars, you craft the magic, and everything changes. You are holding your sword in front of you and the sword is buried half into the surface of the bronze dome. You look down at the blade of your sword, it glistens with something as thought freshly oiled. You take a step forward and your hand enters the metal surface of the dome and is swallowed up, the vision fades. Oil my blade? As indicated by your vision, you apply a little oil to the blade. It gleams, but the gleam is not the gleam you saw in your vision. That was thicker, more yellowy. Oh man, it's probably... I probably need a beeswax to this. Are you serious? I don't know how to get beeswax beside the very first freaking encounter on the very first sorcery. So it's insane for me, like this is what I actually need. Unless there is a way to obtain it otherwise, but not like I would know. Well, since I don't see anything else which I could do here, I think my only option is to just like abandon this. Man, we take so much time to find this place and we can't even enter it. This is... Mm. I wish we could, I think that would be nice. But at this point we can... Just go back, I guess, because I don't want to waste any more time for it. You have had enough of those streets, you cannot afro afford to lose your way for good. The fire at the crossroad is still burning. You look over the group around the fire. They are poor and half starved, but... There are at least 30 of them. You cannot hope to overpower them all. If you were to attack, you would most likely be surrounded and stabbed in the back. 
just the scavengers. <laughs> sure, just give me this option. Just wait when I misclick. <laughs> I don't think I, I even need to attack them for that, whatever reason I would do that. I do not know. You pass by the alleys and follow the road as it heads towards the rising wall of Mapang. After a while, the path opens out into a stony clearing. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. It will be dark soon. Guards walk this way and that across the space. The flagstone of the square are smoothed and worn as stood by torrential rain. Across the square is a low wall, set with a door. The guards do not seem to be guarding it, but none of are going anywhere near it either. The people in the square are moving this way and that, seemingly without purpose. They all seem quite concerned and busy, however. You could elbow your way through the strange crowds filling the square. You cross into the middle of the small square. Guards move this way and that across the flagstones. The sun lowers towards the horizon. Soon it will be dark once more. In one corner of the square is a tent from which rich smells are rising. Oh! The food cellar has a low tent with a cooking stove. A few of the square wandering populace pause by it to eat before continuing on their endless circuits. This is not a good place to hang around. I would like to find a place to sleep, maybe. I would like to have some food as well, actually. You approach the small kitchen. The one side along table is crowded with people eating their meals. The chef bustles through the kitchen. Hungry? It seems the cook is serving mysterious cake for 7 gold. It is bright orange. Seven gold is exactly how much I have! Oh my god! Is this game just like tells you it's cost as much as you have money right now or? You ask about the mysterious cake. Now, you are probably wondering about the color. I cannot tell you. Might make you nervous, but Alchefs make Mista, I mean, have secrets. Mista? You attract the attention of the chief. Yeah? You want to eat? Is the food good? Best in this part of the city, he replies proudly before adding though that that's not saying much. <laughs> what is this part of the city? The eastern square. But it's uh, more like a holding pen really. What are the people here are doing? Here? <coughs> Eating. Out in the square you mean? They are waiting. Waiting for what? To be needed, of course. If you watch long enough, you'll see him being called away. You ask a lot of questions. The chief observes through narrow eyes. Must make you hungry. He waves a hand at his stove. Something to eat? Oh man, I have really... I mean, should we eat it? I think we could eat it, right? I mean, my stamina is pretty bad, but that could help me. And I have only four donations left, so... Oh, it gives me just two stamina. Well, that was very helpful. You pay tacking your meal to the table. You slurp it up. The meal is disgusting. Clearing your dishes, you move on. Well, there goes my gold, I guess. <laughs> you turn to the middle of the small square. Guards patrol the area. Clouds rumble as they roll across the diamond sky. Sk Sk sky. A pair of sidemasters in deep discussion cross the square, but they do not notice you amongst the other guards. Clearly, life in Mapang has lessened their power of sight. They disappear into an alley mouth. This is not a good place to hang around. You make your way to the far wall into which is a set a low door. You turn to see that the guards in the square have noticed you, but your disguise appears to reassure them you are not stopped. You feel an incredible energy rising from behind the door, as thought something was chained there. 
I feel like touching this dot is like a mistake to be made. You try the door. It is merely leeched against the wind and not locked. Which way now? Really? You... I just want to... Just... Just telling me I can go inside? But... You step through the door into a curious quiet area of stone. Low towers rise from a dark pool of icy looking water. With paths sneaking across it from one to another, the whole place is worn and ruined. You cannot help but shiver, you are back amongst the haunted powerful towers of abandoned quarter of Mapang. The sun has almost set and the sky is deep pink. It will be night soon. The problem is I don't see... I could find place to sleep here maybe? The water looks cold as ice and has no reflections. Some of the towers rise to the height of trees while others have been cut down and others are nothing but circles of rubble. Smoke rises from some while others crackle with gentle light and energy. This place is clearly buzzing with power. You could explore deeper or escape back to the relatively safety of Mapang. Well, I do really like to explore those, however, I think that would be a stupid thing to do. I really need to get some sleep. I'm not even know are these towers like like place you actually need to go. Because I have feeling like maybe we just need to go through the freaking like there was like vaults, like basement. Let's try to find a place to sleep maybe. But I have no clue where I could find a place to sleep. Rest here. Night is gathering all around you. Everything seems quiet. Lying your pack down, you try to rest despite the strange noises that drift through the air. You do not need to eat more today. Okay, I'm gonna just close my eyes. You get comfortable and rest. What is left of the night is restless with vivid dreams and all the while you hear distant laughter from the east. During the past day you lost some gold, I mean all of it, yep, and found no new clues. You open your eyes to see guards walking this way and that across the square. Amongst various others you leap quickly to your feet in alarm. You could elbow your way through the strange crowds filling the square. Okay, we get some stamina back, I guess, but this is still not very good. I think... I think maybe I'm just gonna pause here. And... You know, we're gonna explore the towers in the next episode. And I really don't want to die, and I feel like doing a really huge mistake here. Like, this is just like... It's there for you to explore, but you don't need to go there like at all. You just need to pass the freaking like the creatures in the basement, which you might remember from a few episodes before this one. But I'm gonna give it a shot, and I'm probably gonna regret it. But we're gonna explore this side of towers next time. I'm curious what they hiding. I know they hiding a lot of death probably. And I'm gonna regret going there, but we'll see. We'll see. I hope you're looking forward to check the more Towers of Doom! <laughs> <coughs> yeah. So, have a lovely upcoming weekend, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you did, and I'm gonna see you with more sorcery next Friday. Farewell.